Hi, I'm Allie. Join me as we create this pearl path bracelet, which also would look great as a choker. So there's an idea for you. Remember, if you need any supplies, go ahead and look below the video. In the description, we'll put a link there to the products that are exactly used in this sample piece. Gather up your materials and let's get started. So to begin, we have our four millimeter pearls and our four millimeter crystal. We also have the clasp here. We'll add that after. And I have my seed beads ready to go, but I don't need them yet. So we're not going to crowd our mat with that. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to start with a Hubble stitch. Now the Hubble stitch, we're just doing one row and it's kind of modification on the Hubble because we're going to do it with a twist. To begin the stitch, I'm going to start off with on my size six white dragon thread and I'm using a size 10 needle. I'm going to start off with three of my four millimeter pearls and let that drop down to the bottom of the thread. Now we're going to work back down the thread so I'm not worried about uh, leaving a lot of extra space for the clasp and we're going to use these pearls kind of to start and work as a stoppy. So I'm actually going to go through two of them and then come on out. From here we're going to treat this as our first Hubble unit and we are going to add a crystal and then we're going to go down through bead number two or the next bead in line. It's really bead three because we use this as a stop bead, but normally it's going to be through bead number two. So here you're going to have a little kind of funky triangle of beads. After doing so and coming out of that second pearl in our mixture, we're going to do the exact same thing. So I want you to add one, two, and three of your pearls. You're going to let that drop down next to that first set. So back through pearl number one, coming out toward pearl number two. What that's going to do is create that little triangle of pearls. See how I have some extra thread there? Go ahead and pull that tight, get it nice and close to that first little unit. Add my four millimeter crystal, and then sew down through the next pearl in line. We're going to repeat this the whole length of the bracelet. Now, normally in Hubble Stitch, you wanna make sure that your project stays with all of those crystals towards the top. Don't worry about it as you're doing this center line because we're actually going to have it so that we use it with a twist and go every other. So right now, just concentrate on your units, making sure you get about seven inches of units because then the last thing we'll do is we'll add an extra, um, little more than a quarter of an inch with our clasp. So seven inches of units, if you need that to be about your size, remember you have a little less than half an inch for the clasp section. So if you have a smaller or a bigger bracelet, obviously keep going. But I'm gonna do this center line of beads, adding in once again, we'll do it one more time, three of my pearls, and you can use any beads for this. So if you don't wanna use pearls down the center, I know I named it Pearl Path, but if you want to use gemstones, you can certainly do that. You can do this all with crystals, up to you. After you have your three beads on, go ahead and sew back through bead number one toward bead number two, getting this into that triangular setting, pushing it down towards the rest of the project. Grab your crystal and sew through the next pearl in line. That's it. Oh, so simple and then keep going on and see how it naturally wants to go up, down, up, down, up, down. We're gonna take advantage of that and do that for seven inches. Once you have your length, which is gonna be about 20 to 22, 23, 24 units, depending on your wrist size, you're gonna be coming out of the last unit, just like if you were ready to add your next bead to it. And what I want you to do as we get a little closer here is we're gonna attach our clasp to the end here. I've added on to my thread and needle, 15 O's, four of them, then my clasp, then my four 15 O's. We're gonna be coming back down the project again, so I'm not worrying too, too much about reinforcing this thread. The infinite clasp here has a soldered ring on the clasp. If you're using a clasp that doesn't, make sure to use a wire guard. From here, my thread is coming out the bottom of that second pearl. I'm gonna sew into the top of that second pearl circling around this design so that way my clasp fits right at the end here. And this bracelet is two-sided, so it doesn't matter if it the clasp went up or down. And what I'm gonna do is start working down the top. We're gonna add one 15 OC bead and then sew through the next round pearl 
there in line. So that's through that third pearl if you're looking at it as your unit. From here, we're going to step up and we are going to attach to all of the crystals that are popping up. Now, that being said, you want to make sure, see how I'm kind of straightening out my Hubble stitch? You want to make sure that every other stitch is up, down, up, down, up, down. From here, I'm going to add my 115 followed by one crystal, followed by two 15s. I'm then gonna sew through the next crystal in line. We're gonna work our way up through the bracelet, adding in 15s and crystals as we go along this line here, the whole way to the top, we'll do the other side, and then we'll come back down to the start of the clasp. To come back through the design now, you're going to put on your needle a collection of Two 15 O's, then one crystal, one 15 O, one crystal, two 15 O's. So you've got two on the sides, one in the middle of those two additional four millimeter crystals. You're then going to sew through that next top crystal along the line. Once again, coming out that crystal, we're not sewing into the pearls at all. We're going to do two 15s followed by crystal 15 and then another crystal. And then after the crystal, both the start and the finish, you're adding two 15s. Once you have those two 15 O's on there, you're going to sew once again through the next crystal. And if there's a crystal really close by, you're going to notice that it is not going to sit correctly. So it's going to possibly be the crystal that's sitting down. So go ahead and add these right along the top, adding in the two 15s, crystal 15 crystal, two 15s, the whole way along the top line of this bracelet. Once you get to the end of the one side, and I flipped it to the bottom because we're going to be working along the top this time, we're going to do the clasp on the opposite side. Now, you do want to make sure when you do the clasp on the opposite side that the tongue is facing the correct direction, facing up, so that when you clasp it together, the bracelet doesn't twist in the middle. So I'm going to keep it right there so I know which way to hold it here. And from here, we're going to repeat the same thing that we did previously. We're adding one 15. We're going to go through the pearl right after the crystal there. I'm going to give a nice little pull because that will tighten it up slightly. You'll notice just a little bit tighter in that Hubble stitch than the stitch you started out with. So if you do notice that's getting a little smaller, you can simply add another Hubble unit on right there. No problem. From here, Go through and add your clasp. Add four more beads. And then this one, we are not going to be coming back down through, so I want to reinforce the clasp as well. So I have my clasp on there facing the correct direction, going back through the pearl. And then we're going to reinforce the clasp by taking the thread back through the exact same way. So once again, we're going to go up through the 15 O's, through the clasp, down through the 15 O's, and out the pearl. Once you get done reinforcing the clasp, you're going to be coming out of the pearl. And remember that starter thread is there, right on the opposite side of the next pearl. I'm going to do my 15 O. I'm going to sew through that next pearl, just like we did on the opposite side when we were starting to come down through the crystals. And literally, we're going to repeat the same thing. But prior to doing so, we're going to grab that starter thread, we're going to take the two threads, and we're literally going to tie them together in a nice square knot. Right over left, twist it, left over right. That gets rid of that starter thread. From here, we go back into that same rotation. One 15 o, one crystal, two 15s, and then into the crystal at the top here. Once we're into the crystal on the top, guess what? We're in the same exact pattern the whole way down this crystal path bracelet. So two 15s, one crystal, one 15, one crystal, two 15s, whole way along the opposite side as well. As you finish up your bracelet, you're gonna come down to that last crystal. And remember this side of the clasp is already on there. So I'm gonna show you kind of what it looks like when it's laid out. You have that great sparkle on the side. And remember, comment below if you change up any of the kind of path borders here or even the middle because it really helps out other Potomac beaters that may be watching. So here at the end, what we wanna do is we want to reinforce our clasp and not off our thread. So here we are, we're gonna grab one 15 out and we're gonna sew through the pearl that's next in line, just like we did on the other side. 
Now what we're going to do is reinforce this loop going back up through all of our seed beads, going through that soldered loop then as well. And once I'm through there, you always want to make sure any time you are attaching a clasp to have more than one thread going through there. You never want one thread because that is your area where you have the most kind of wear and tear. So you're going to pull the thread through, go back through that purl one more time. And then if you want to, you can even take a third strand through there. Once you are you have as many threads as you want to go through there. What I'm going to do is suggest that you go back into that Hubble stitch. So back into the pearls and we're going to get rid of our thread. So we're going to go into the pearls here. We're just sewing back through them a little bit, circling around again, just through those pearls. Tightening up that last little bit. And then I'm going to go underneath the bridge thread or the thread that goes between the pearls. Tuck that thread underneath. That's going to create a little loop. Sew through the loop once, sew through the loop twice. It's going to be a nice little sewer's knot. Pull that nice and tight against the project. Take your thread and needle back into that same Hubble stitch, kind of making it disappear. And then on the other side, remember we knotted the starter thread as well. So what we're going to do is grab our thread burner or your scissors. I always suggest a thread burner. I love it. Go in, leave a little bit, about a quarter of an inch. Burn it right down next to the project to finish that up. Other side as well, going in here, same thing. That starter thread going down, burning it tight towards the project, making sure that you're not burning any of the thread on your project to finish up your Pearl Path bracelet. And you can see, a little bit big on me because I made it a standard size here, but how pretty it looks and how light catching it is to put those pearls and those crystals right on and having them down the line. So if you wanna switch up again, the pearls for something else, the crystals for something else, it's just a really simple up and back bracelet with that fun zigzag design. Little challenge, go ahead and use crystals in the interior here and do crystals and then your pearls, pearls, crystals, so you get kind of a nice zigzag line. Thanks so much for joining me in the Pearl Crystal Path Bracelet. Remember, if you do need any materials, go ahead below the video in the description. We put links there that you can check everything out. Remember also, if you haven't yet, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. As always, I hope you learned a lot from this video and stay tuned for our next inspirational design.